Hello everybody, Jurassic Player here, and I am the developer behind Decky Auto Flatpaks. It's a plugin for Decky Loader to manage flatpaks and flatpak updates. It's one of two available flatpak updaters available in the Decky plugin store. The other one being Flatpak Updater by Zero X Dead, which is this one. And um, as a quick disclaimer of what I've got, I have Decky Loader version 2.6.0 pre-release 1 and a I am on the... Oh, that's too far. What am I doing? I am on the preview channel. This is the version 3.4.5. That's the build date. And I'm also using my auto flat packs version 1.6.0 as of February 20th. Um, so this video is intended to be a documentation of the state of auto flat packs and the feature set it currently has, primarily as a reminder to myself and to help new users uh, to better introduce new users to what Auto Flatpaks has to offer. So, in the quick access menu, we have these three buttons here. We have the package manager, check for updates, update all packages. Um, updating all packages will perform an update check prior to updating, so there's no need to press the check for updates before hitting the update all button. The two buttons also respect the mass packages, which are packages marked to be ignored when checking and updating. Uh, this is primarily used to prevent the package from updating automatically with the other packages. For example, like if you have an emulator version you want to stay on, but you want to update all of the other packages, you can just mask that single package and then let auto flat packs do the rest of the auto update. Um, next we have the update interval, which by default just checks if there are any updates, and then based on the notification settings, it will notify you. Uh, if unattended upgrades is toggled on, it will also update all the packages after it is checked, and then if the check on boot is toggled on, it will perform that exact same check on Decky Loader boot. And so if you have check on boot and unattended upgrades both, it will install upgrades uh, on boot if they are available. And um, if we go down, we have the toast, uh, the notification settings of which there is toast and sound. Uh, if you turn off sound and just have toast notifications, it will do just a toast notification. If you have it the other way around, it will be just a sound notification. And you can do something like turning both of them off and turning on unattended upgrades to do a completely silent auto update, if you prefer. Uh, and that's basically it for the quick access menu. And so if we go into the package manager, we have a couple areas, the first of which is this browse page, um, which by default lists the currently installed packages and selecting a package will bring up some information about the package. Uh, it's a little bit sparse at the moment, but will be changed in the future. <laughs> and uh, we also have the three buttons here, which is the mask, unmask button, the update button, and the install slash remove button. And uh, managing packages should be fairly simple. Um, you just queue up the packages you wish to the change. So if we wanted to like if we wanted to unmask this one, unmask this one, and then 
update update like Visual Studio Code and maybe uninstall this package. Uh, we can select all of them using the A button and then if we want when we want to apply our changes uh, we just press X to apply Q. Um, we also have the options which provides a list of filterable options so we can search by text, we can search by uh, filter by type, so either an app or a runtime or both. And we have the status, which is installed, not installed, queued, and then updatable. We have a mask uh, filter, which is either masked or unmasked. And we also have a sort order, which is A to Z, Z to A, largest to smallest, smallest to largest, the standard stuff. If we go to not installed, we can actually also queue up things to install. Uh, like, you know, if I wanted to install these, these are from Flathub, and uh, that's really it. So if you want to install stuff from Flathub, you can do that from this interface. Uh, if we go to queued, we can actually see the stuff that we have queued here. These are the two that I want to install, the two that I wanted to unmask, the one that I wanted to uninstall, and then the one I wanted to update. And I don't actually want to install those. And if we apply the queue, um, while it is applying the queue, we actually have a status bar here that tells us what is going on, um, what package it's on, what it's trying to do, which in this case is trying to update Visual Studio Code. Um, this is happening in the background, so you don't actually have to be on this page. You could be playing a game or something like that while it's updating and things like that. Um, the other thing is if we go back here, because I unmasked the two packages earlier, which actually let's go here, because I unmasked these two packages, LibreWolf and Mindustry, uh, those updates now show up here. And if we click on that status bar, we can actually see that it wants to update those two packages. Um, this status bar will also show up if you click on the check for updates button and it will it will list the same two uh, and then that's the two that will update when you click on the update all packages. And so that's that's basically how the mass packages works. We can reinstall that. And next we have the logger page. Um, this page is basically an ephemeral list of the most recent installs and uninstalls on the system. Um, actions that write to the system logs will eventually push this action out. <laughs> and so eventually it will be blank if like you do things like rebooting your device multiple times or other things that write to the system log. Um, if you know Linux, it's basically journal CTL. And so anything that writes to that, eventually it will push this stuff out. Next, we have the advanced page. This has first uh, aggressive package filtering. These packages are basically ones that I believe is kind of like clutter. They're not really packages intended for non-developers. And so I don't really want them showing in the browse browse page and you can toggle it off if you want those packages or not. Uh, we have the default app location which if you know Windows uh, they have their local app data stuff. Uh, this is basically the same thing for flat packs and you're able to select whether it's the internal SSD or uh, micro SD or if you have any connected external SSDs, it will also show up here. Um, you can actually see what places it tries to find. If you go over to the Steam uh, storage area, this actually will tell you the places that uh, will be listed. So this is the internal drive and then the micro SD card. 
if you see right above the uh, right here this tells you basically the path and that's the path that I show basically so we have that and we also have like the run media uh, the SS the, the, the micro SD <laughs> so if we go back uh, not there go back here so the other thing that we can do is migrate the app data and this is if you want to move your app data from like your internal SSD over to your SD card you can move it using this and it will give you a warning about what it's planning on doing and then if you click on migrate it will migrate those it will basically copy them over to your external device or wherever you plan on moving them to and then uh, make a sim link or a shortcut uh, so that flat pack knows where the app data is uh, depending on how much data you have it may take longer than it does for me right now because i don't have that much data so it doesn't take that long and uh next we have clean unused packages this one is basically any packages that are not used by any other app packages will be shown here and then you can choose to remove them if you wish and uh it's basically clutter if you don't <laughs> it just takes up more space but you don't have to do it but it is some sort of maintenance that could be done if you are low on space and happen to have a lot of unused packages we also have the repair broken packages which is very simply just a proxy to flat pack repair and uh, for the most part should not be required or should not be needed by most users although I have seen some rare cases where people do need to use flat pack repair so this button is basically for them if they need to run or if they want to dry run dry run is very useless in this interface um, in both cases there is no feedback so it doesn't tell you whether it has fixed anything or whether there are any issues or whether it failed <laughs> to fix anything right now i don't have any ui interface that displays that sort of information so it's basically blind just run <laughs> and hope it works uh, aside from that i have the about page which basically gives a quick rundown about how to use auto flat packs as well as on the very bottom here i have uh, some extra information about how the app data locations works because it is a little bit non-trivial and it does leave artifacts on uninstall so with this at least hopefully you'll have a better understanding of what has been done so that if you need to do it manually, you can still revert it manually. Um, preferably revert it using auto flat packs so that you don't have to worry about that. But worst case, here's some information about what happens. Um, I also have some social media links that don't work mostly because I don't really think they are very useful in the Steam Deck UI. It's just kind of clunky to use for regular browsing. And so I don't really have that as a high priority to fix. And then I also have the sort of work in progress area, which is basically my notes area for what I plan to add, what I plan to change and possibly remove things like that. So one of the things I'm planning on adding is a flat seal kind of permissions manager and then uh, another one is basically to have the actual flat pack apps and runtimes installable in different install locations uh, so that you can have both the app and the app data in different locations if you want to and kind of conserve that uh, steam deck internal ssd space you know 
at least for me, which I only have 64 gigabytes worth of space. And uh, that's it. That's all the Deki flat packs or auto flat packs can do right now. And uh, in the future, I plan to add more. Most likely not remove anything, hopefully. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy using auto flat packs, or if you want to use the flat pack updater, that is also fine. Both can accomplish the same things. Although at the moment, I guess auto flat packs can do some extra stuff. If you don't plan on using any of that extra stuff, then go ahead and use the flat pack updater. That's fine too. Whichever one's fine. It doesn't really bother me. And um, yeah, enjoy using your flat packs and enjoy using your Steam Deck. Have a nice night.